What's going on guys and welcome back to Season 3 of my NHL 20 Detroit Red Wings Franchise Mode Series. As you can see here, the Anaheim Ducks actually were Stanley Cup champions last year and Zadina had 5 goals in 5 playoff games for us. Unfortunately, we actually lost the Pittsburgh Penguins in round 1 of the playoffs, but obviously that's a big, you know, step up from the first year where I think we finished like 2nd last in the league. I forget, we were at the bottom though for sure, so right there you can see a quick look at Anaheim's run. Obviously, we're looking to do even better in this coming season. Now, 2022 obviously has Shane Wright and Matthew Savoy. Wouldn't mind one of those two guys, but if we're competing for a Stanley Cup, obviously, that's probably a bit more important than just trying to get a really good prospect. So, raise a look at our contracts. The one big thing, Athens CU grew up to 88 overall, but he's 26 years old, so he's not going to be an RFA. He's going to be a UFA, doesn't want to resign with us. So, I don't even know what he's going to be asking for. There's a chance we're going to lose him. How he grew to 88, I have no idea. He was like 83, 84, had a pretty good season, like 67 points, but up to an 88 after that seems kind of crazy. Like Dadnov had more points than him and he's still only an 86. So, I mean, maybe because of the age thing, Fabry's gonna wanna raise as well. Um, luckily, we do have a lot of guys whose contracts are ending, but uh, we're still gonna be tight situation cap-wise. Might have to trade like Jason Zucker, somebody like that. Also, I'm gonna give you a quick look at the draft class before we get to the draft. So. Raddy there is supposed to be first overall high elite. Mitchell just made up, medium elite. Uh, Joshua high top six. Clark there, medium elite, number six. So really not looking like the best draft. These two guys, the ones guaranteed medium lead, Zach Bailey, he's also made up. Uh, Wallstead, we know is a franchise potential goalie. At number 12, I mean, we don't really need a goalie, but that's still a really good value, I think. Uh, Cheka, I think, high top four, medium top four, I forget exactly, but he wouldn't be too bad of a pick either. So. Uh, looks like, you know, not really the strongest draft class. And right here, guys, look at the retired players. Joe Thornton finally calls it quits. Almost 1,600 points there in 1,700 games played. Obviously, first overall back in 97. Marion Hosa, the 12th pick in 97, also retires. He was just in the AHL, though. Alexander Steen there. Ryan Kessler actually helps out Anaheim. I think he still had one year left on his deal. Derek Roy, Dion Phaneuf, Drew Stafford, Matt Molson. So, outside the first few guys, really no one too crazy. Goalies here. Thiessen, I think is how you say his name. I was wondering if maybe like Lungfist would be there, but he's still going strong. So we're gonna get to the draft now. Obviously, we don't have a high pick. Steen, Hammies, and Thornton all become coaches. That's actually, I feel like Joe Thornton could be a pretty good coach. Dion Funuff and Jonathan Erickson are scouts as well. That's pretty sick. So like I was saying, guys, we'll get to the draft now and just see how that goes. And so right now, guys, we're gonna get straight to Tampa Bay for their 14th overall pick this year, offering them the 17th pick, so only dropping down three spots, as well as Minnesota's third rounder next year. Reason being, I want to try and get one of two defensemen at the 14th spot, uh, either Lambos from Winnipeg or Cheka, who's on the Guelph Storm. I think Lambos is medium elite and Cheka's like medium top four or high top four, but he starts out at a high rating, so I feel like that's a lot better spot for us than 17. So um, we're just going to sim to our pick right now. Hopefully, I think they're both still available. Pinelli, 72 medium top six. Same with Offman and Harrison. I, I think those three guys are all made up, I'm not going to lie, just because same exact rating, same potential. I don't recognize any of them. Wallstedt there, 64 medium franchise. Luke Hughes goes at uh, number nine. Jarvanen, I think, is also made up. 79 medium lead's kind of crazy. Bailey there. Wall there, 71 high top six. So kind of a rough pick for the Kings, considering who went after him. Clark only a 59, but it is medium elite. I bumped his rating up too to a 55, and it only grew by four. Whereas Hughes, I guess Hughes is the same. I think he was like a 54, only grew by four. So I don't know, those defensemen, I guess, are just harder to grow. Sillinger though, 78 medium elite. I made Sillinger a 55, so same rating as Clark, but the forwards just grow a lot more, probably because he just had way more points playing in junior. Mitchell, 81 medium elite, he's made up. And then Raddy there, 78, but he's got high elite. So. Uh, those created players there, honestly, a lot of times are so much better, which still annoys me. I feel like the real players should be the better, you know, the better players rather than the created ones. So, like I was saying, I think Lambos is medium elite. I'm not sure why I'm blanking, but I feel like that's just, you know, that's part of it. That's going to be more fair. Cheka, I know for sure, is not elite. He's either medium, I think he's medium top four, but he uh, starts at a high rating. Where Lambos, I think, is medium elite. So, if I'm right, I'm going to risk it. Hopefully, I'm right on this. He is elite. Okay, 65 medium elite. I think Cheka probably gets taken the next one. And Robota there, high top nine uh, to the Sabres. Bit of a rough pick. Kidney, 66, high top nine. And there you go, Cheka, 62, medium top four. Okay, yeah, so our pick definitely was the right one. Three overall higher, medium elite there for Lambo. And now I guess I'm trying to get back to the first round, training for the Avs, 28th overall pick, offering them a second rounder, 49th overall, and a third, 89th. We'll see what they say. Trades rejected. I felt like that probably wasn't quite enough value. What if we do a 67th and then we throw in a 6th? 
feel like this is pretty good value now. And there we go, trades accepted. So reason for this, I'm gonna try and get Dylan Gunther here. He's actually supposed to go like 29. So I'm hoping, okay, I think he's still available. Doesn't look he was picked. That guy there, 71 medium top six, going that, 74 medium top six. Like some pretty high rated guys here going late in the first round. Not as good potential, but um, higher rating, which is kind of strange. So like I was saying with this Gunther, scouts recommend him. I already know uh, he's a good player. So getting him along with Lambos, yeah, 68 medium top six. Very good first round for us. Our next pick, guys, in the third round. I noticed Winnipeg here got this elite goalie, fifth overall in the third round. So, bit of a steal there. Um, honestly, he's like the only steal I've actually seen so far, other than him. I don't think. Oh, high elite, 48 overall, though. So, even though he's got high elite, it's going to take a while for him to grow. So, aside from those two goalie picks, I actually haven't seen an elite player outside of like the top 10 or whatever. Right now, I'm actually going to check and see if any of our scouts found one. So, there's two guys there, 50 50 shots of being medium elite. That's kind of tough though. We'll see if there's any gems left. I don't think so. And yeah, there's no gems left. So 89th overall, like we could risk it on one of the two 50-50 medium elites. It's a bit early for that. Although we don't have a fourth or a fifth. So there's a chance they could both be gone by the time we pick again. I already got two solid picks in the first round. So I think it's worth it, honestly. Um, I guess we'll take the guy that's ranked a bit higher there, the Finn. And low elite. That's honestly, 49 overall sucks, but low elite's not too bad. And like I was saying, guys, we didn't have a fourth or fifth pick, so next pick here is actually at the end of the sixth round. Maybe the other guy is still there, 186. He was supposed to go like 207, or there he is, uh, Gortson. Hopefully, also low elite. And medium 70. All right, so we did hit on one of them, but not the other. And our final pick here, guys, in this draft, I think we only have one seventh rounder. Actually, you know what? We might have two. So we might have another pick after this one. Again, I feel like we just got to go for it. Hopefully we hit somebody. Um, I don't know why. I'm just feeling the rush in here. No really information on either. 7th D again. Probably never gets signed for us. And so this is our last pick now. 17 here in the 7th round. I mean, like, I don't know why you would take guaranteed AHL. Or actually, our scouts like Kostitz in here. So we'll trust them. Literally no information, but they like them. 7th D, okay. So our first three picks there were solid, the next three all 7th defensemen unfortunately, but still not too bad. And we're now the resign phase here guys with just under 20 million in cap space. The cap's actually gone up to 90.5 million, which is kind of insane. So we might actually have enough money to keep Athens to see you, but 8 million there. I mean, I can try giving him 8 million for 4. He is 88 overall now, which is pretty high. I feel like he probably says no, he doesn't want an extension, wants to go to UFA, which sucks. Fabry here is an 85. Looking for 6.4 for 6 years. So until he's 31, I think that's honestly pretty fair for an 85. I'd be willing to do 6x6. Six six. He can even grow more. He's 25 years old, so we'll try that. Definitely kind of crazy how expensive these guys are getting. Like I was saying, Zucker might have to get traded just to give us some cap relief. Raymond's up to an 83, so he'll definitely be playing in the NHL next year. I forgot to show you guys that. Um, I'm hoping if we play him top 6, and maybe he can even win the Calder. It looked pretty good in the AHL. So actually, that's I think that's it for like big name players for us in terms of new contracts. So maybe we can keep Athens C. Leonard there is locked up. Askarov is actually going to be our backup now. 82 overall. That's awesome. So Comrie just going to be an AHL starter. 900k for two years. That's actually really fair. Larson backing him up. 700k for two years. So our goalies are all good. I'm going to go by position now as I just find it's a lot easier. Philippula, 37 years old, 80 overall. Doesn't want an extension. I mean, I don't want him back. Rasmussen, 22, 80. If he gets even, you know, up to an 81, 82, he's definitely a decent third line center. Um, two, three years. Okay, so they don't really think he's going to grow much. This could be potential to have an awesome contract. Okay, I'm going to give him 1.6 for three or eight years. It's like 200k more, but if he even grows to an 83 or something, that is an insane deal. Especially for, you know, having him play third line center. Hopefully he grows a bit. Valino's a 79, so he should finally be in the NHL next year. So N's kind of like an extra guy. Um, I feel like I don't know what to do with him yet. Uh, Grew there, we definitely have to give a contract to medium top six, 64. And then left wings here. So Ernie, 26, 79. I feel like he's still decent. Fourth line left winger. We'll do 1.1 there for one year. Helm, we're letting go of. He's just getting old. Want that contract gone. Hiroshi here is probably another fourth liner for us. 925k, I think is fine. Kuffner there, 25, 77. So I feel like he could end up being a fourth liner for us. Worst case, just a good AHLer. Uh, Pumple here, 28.75 at this point. Probably let him go, let other guys, you know, get more ice time. Guys like Smith here, who hopefully can uh, grow a bit into NHL players for us. Gunther, 18.68. Probably just going to go back to Junior. Hargrave, 20.68. That's honestly not too bad for an NHL player. Edmonds, 20.62. 
I feel like that's decent enough to get a contract. And then looking at our defense here, so next year our top four is going to be Petrangelo, Giordano on the top pair. Sider with probably Goldman on the second pair, just because Goldman's 81 medium length, they're going to have the most potential. Then we have a ton of guys for that bottom spot. You got Bean, Bowie, Hironic, Chelowski, uh, Hicketts is going to be in the AHL. So I think we're going to be trading at least one, maybe two of these guys. I feel like Bowie's probably just going to get traded because he's the oldest. Um, so we'll see what the contract is he wants. 2.6 for two years. I feel like that's a tradable contract. We'll offer him like 2.5 for two. Wow, being here, one year, 700k, is 81 overall D-man. That is really good value. Um, honestly, I'd rather get the two years there for a million because he could probably grow and next year it's just an even better deal. Heronic, Chalowski. I'm thinking Heronic wants what? Just under two there. I feel like if we can do three years for two million, that's worth it. I think Chalowski and Bauer are going to be the guys that get traded. Heronic and Bean on the bottom pair. Chalowski, 1.6. Uh, I'll see if he takes 1.5 there for three. Again, trying to get good contracts that are tradable. Mikkelrath at 29 is just not worth keeping anymore. Lindstrom there, 22. 72 overall, medium top six. is actually really good. Lashoff, he's just an AHL guy. I'll let him go. Setkov, 2264. Not too bad. Medium top six D. Same with Johansson there, uh, 2063. Also, you have a contract to Yakubov there as he's got low lead potential. So, We'll see here, everyone that says yes or whatever. I think we actually might have a bit of cap space, especially if Athens this year is not willing to re-sign with us. We'll definitely have some money for free agency. And Hiroshi here signed with us, which is awesome. Uh, Chalowski as well, so that's good. We got like the three years, 1.5. Um, Hironic rejected. I didn't think it was too cheap. Athens C rejected, wants to test free agency, so that kind of sucks. Like, he randomly just grew by four. Good year, but not an amazing year. Um, I think we're just going to honestly lose Athens C to free agency, but hopefully he can use that money on somebody else. Ernie accepts, Fabry rejects, so we're a bit cheap on Fabry. Bino accepts, which is awesome, because we got for two years there at a million. Comrie accepts, same with Hickett, Smith, Rasmussen, so that's eight years at like 1.5. I'm going to try and get him to grow as much as possible, because that could just be an amazing, amazing contract for us. All the HL guys obviously are going to say yes. So after all that, guys, we still have 16 million in cap space. Obviously, Athens see you here. We want to keep, but he wants to go to free agency, so I guess... We just lose them, which which sucks for sure, but uh, what are you going to do? So Fabry said no to six. I feel like 6.25 for six years. He's played really, really good for us. Um, definitely deserves that. Now, Zadina is going to want a new contract next year, so we have to be mindful of that. Heronic here, I wanted for three years. Maybe we'll just do two on him. Two at like 1.8, see what he says. Again, I think like uh, defensively, we're going to be set because like that's our top four. Or actually, it'd be Goldbin there, who him and Sider should grow a ton on the second pair. And I'm thinking probably Bean, because he's left-handed, and he's the highest rated. And he'll be playing with Heronic, and then Bowie and Chalowski. We can just trade, whether we package them, whatever. I uh, should really get a pretty decent return. Also, guys, I think I'm going to make an offer on N here, just to be kind of like an emergency, I don't know, center for us. One year, one million, see what he says. And N here does accept that offer, so that's awesome. Worst case, you know, he's first-line center AHL. Heronic here... Rejects again. I thought that was fair and Fabry did accept so Heronic will honestly give like an extra 50k too And that should be good. All right guys, so we got Heronic signed I actually had to give him like an extra 100k, but honestly not the biggest deal Also, I see here we actually have to go and hire all new AHL coaches uh, Apparently let all four of ours go which I didn't realize but honestly might not be the worst thing It's just AHL coaches and why not bring in some new faces So obviously guys for AHL the most important thing is teaching trying to get those young players to grow So for the head coach looking at this Boschman dude We'll offer him like a little bit of extra money there. Hopefully he says yes. He's got pretty good teaching. Looking at associate coaches, this one should be a goalie coach. He's got A plus teaching and his, his thing is goalie. So uh, I'm going to offer him the goalie coach role. Looks to be really good. So um, might as well make that offer. Also just made an offer on a couple assistant coaches. They both have like B minus teaching. Scouts there. We got to get a new scout. I'll just do that later. Scouts like pretty easy. You just look for someone that's like A plus in a certain region and put them in that region. So Looking at free agency now, I think we still have like 12 million in cap space, maybe a bit more. 10 million actually. And Athens C is actually the number one free agent. Wow. I mean, again, he didn't want to resign with us. He wanted to test free agency, even though we offered him 8 million. He's asking for 8.4. Could have stayed with the boys. Kaprizov, wow. RFA, 7.8. We have the picks. Thing is, this is 2022, so if we're bad and we give up, Shane Wright or Matthew Savoy for Kaprizov, I don't know. Gallagher there is available. We need a second line center though, more than we need a winger. Like we already actually have a lot of good wingers. Ryan Murray, we have good defense, but Ryan Murray, like I feel like you have to sign him if you can. Like number one defenseman available. 
Dano there, like he'd actually be a decent second line center. 28 84, Donato. And check out goalies, guys. Grubauer's up to an 89 overall. That seems a bit high. I feel like he's playing on a really stacked Avs team, so that makes his rating seem a lot better than it should be. Lungfist, 39 years old, still playing. Same rating though as Leonard. Bennington there. I'm always just kind of curious to see the goalies available. Tons though, like Howard, Mrazek, Ranta, Rene, Sorokin there. Only an 83 at 25 years old. I thought he'd be a bit higher than that, but. Maybe just because he only has, you know, so many years to grow. So big year for goalies in free agency, not so much skaters. I feel like I'm going to throw some money here at Athanasiu. Four years, eight point. Let's do, let's offer him. He's, like, he's an 88 overall. I feel like that's, that's crazy. But we'll offer him that money, see if he comes back. If not, probably go after like Dano and Murray. And because we have so many good young forwards, guys, I want to make sure that they're all getting a decent amount of ice time. As well, I wouldn't mind just getting a bit more cash space for us, especially if Athanasiu accepts our offer. So... Right now, I'm going to use the fine trade feature on Zucker. He'd be playing like third line left wing for us. We have guys that are low 80s with that can grow more and gain paid a lot less. It just makes more sense. Give them that ice time. So 28 offers. Wow. Second and a third Columbus. Delandra from Dallas isn't bad. A first and a fourth. The 2022 first, like they don't do good. Could be a lottery pick. Um, so Dallas is very interested. So far, I think the first and the fourth. I like that. Florida there with just a first. Heponiemi in a third. Wow, we're getting a lot of action here on Zucker. Defoley, second, third. Koivu, Foley again. Kemper there in a third round pick. We already have Leonard though. Foot in a third. I'm not sure how good Foot is right now, but that could be a really good trade. Course check. First and a fourth from Vegas. Um, wow, so some really good deals. Top six, not sure how good that guy is. First and a fourth from the Capitals. Uh, McMichael in a third. I don't know what McMichael's at right now. Okay, let's check McMichael here, and then I want to check Foot. And if neither, if they're both still like 60s, I'd probably just go with the first round pick. McMichael's 20-68. That's pretty good. And a, th and a third rounder as well. Uh, we'll check Foot next. Look at this, Cal Foot, 22 years old, 76 overall, medium top four. Thing is, I just realized like, we already have too many young defense. I'm even just drafted a medium elite one, so I don't know. I, th I think I might just take the first round pick from Dallas and hopefully we can get somebody that's medium lead opposed to just medium top six forward or medium top four defenseman. So like I was saying, guys, I'm going to take a risk here. Take the first and fourth round pick from Dallas. They're a contender, but hopefully they miss the playoffs. And maybe that first rounder ends up being a lottery pick. Obviously, Cal Foot. we know we're getting a solid young defenseman. Same with McMichael, but we already have a lot of good prospects. I'm willing to risk it here and try and get an even better one. And right here, our AHL head coach accepted our offer, which is awesome. He had really good teaching, so hopefully those guys grow. And a pretty big trade just went down. Anaheim trading Silverberg and a sixth round pick to the Devils for a second and a third. And right here, Edward Vlasic and a third for two first round picks. I do not want that $7 million contract for Vlasic, especially since he played on our second pair. We already have Giordano Petrangelo. Um, this guy here accepts our offer to be our goalie coach, which is awesome. I think he had like A plus teaching. And I think we only had to give him like an extra 100k. This guy rejects to be our HL assistant coach. I'm not sure why. Um, we'll just find that later on. Just someone that's like decent and cheap. And Athens CU goes with the Montreal Canadiens. Wow. So they finally get their first line center there. I mean, Athens CU has been a second line center this whole time until recently. So we'll see how that uh, does for them. Looks like Kaprizov either got signed with the Wild or some other team. And as you can see, Deneau's gone. So waiting on Athens CU. That's just a lot of cap space, but unfortunately, we're missing out on some of the big names. Looks like Ryan Murray already signed, so honestly, I don't mind that. I'm okay with being bad this year. And honestly, all we really need now is a third-line winger. As I was looking at it, we could just have Lucas Raymond play second-line center. He's got 75 face-offs, which is good enough. Plus, I feel like he'll probably grow um, playing second-line minutes and end up being 84-85, which is what we need. So third-line winger, Gusev wants one year, which is kind of perfect. I really don't want to pay more than that. Kolachuk wants two, but he's 38, so even though he's 84... I am worried that's not going to last, so maybe we get Gusev here. I don't know what he's going to... I'll do 82. I'll do one year at 5.5. He'll probably be playing with like Tyler Tuzzi, Rasmussen on the third line, which honestly be pretty solid. Also, too, we'll check potentials here. I see Varane is an RFA. I just don't... We have so many wingers. Really, it's just not worth it. Let's see if there's anyone... Ooh, Dalcall. 25-76, low top six. That's a really good player, I think, to play, say, first line on the AHL team. Same goes for Engvall there, 25-74. Could maybe turn into a player for us. Tyler Benson here, 23-76. Make him the max offer there on a two-way. And I see Oliver Borgstrand here, 26-80. Wants 1.35. I mean, that's really cheap for someone his rating. Um, probably get him for, like, 1.2. Just be a solid fourth liner for us. And this Pillet guy here, 25-78 RFA. Um, I'll give him the max two-way. I 
feel like Buffalo probably matches, but might as well try. And so Gustav actually accepted her offer. I wasn't sure if he would. So hit him on the third line, like I said, Bertuzzi and probably Rasmussen's going to be solid. Uh, Pulit there goes with Buffalo, which is fine. And Borkstrand appreciates the interest, but also goes with Buffalo. That's all right. He said too many guys basically fighting for his minutes. Dalcol though accepts, so again, I think he'd be solid on our first AHL line. Benson rejects, or sorry, Benson accepts as of now, but looks like Edmonton's probably going to match. Engel accepts as well, so that's nice. And Chicago here is offering us Zach Hyman in a third and a fourth for Gunther, who we just drafted. Comrie in a low top nine. Again, we have more than enough wingers. No reason to give up first round prospect in Gunther for Zach Hyman. And Edmonton here matched our offer to Benson, which I figured they would. And now Ottawa's trying to give us Zaitsev in a third for a first, a third in Comrie. I think I'd rather keep that first round pick, especially since we have too many defensemen right now. All right, guys, so I was looking around. I noticed the Edmonton Oilers still need a number one defenseman. Right now, Clefbaum is their best at 84 overall. Obviously, they have McDavid and Saddle. I feel like maybe they'd be willing to move one of these guys for a number one D-man, something they don't have, especially since, you know, they already have two awesome centers. Nuge is a more than capable second line center. They also drafted Holtz, so um, they're definitely not going to be too bad at forward. Neil's up to an 84. Making a huge offer here. Alex Petrangelo, he's actually got max trade value. Signed for $9.5 million for six more years. 31 years old, so until he's like 37, I mean, I don't know. Like, I feel like by that point, he'll be bad. And we're kind of a team that's rebuilding where he's ready to win now. Madison Bowie is an extra defenseman for us. And then Akita Goose said we just signed, but bringing in Dreisel, I don't really need him. Wouldn't mind just flipping him right now for the cap. Also, I'm sure Edmonton wouldn't mind having a bit more offense. So, uh, like I was saying, I'll show you guys quick. Petrangelo has the most value on this team at the max. It's kind of crazy for a 90 overall D-man. And it's not like he's on a super cheap contract or anything. So I feel like before he starts to regress with his old age, we got to try and get something for him. I think dry saddle, him and Larkin down the center is a 1-2 is insane. So let's see what Edmonton says here. Trade is accepted. Wow. And what that trade also means, guys, we don't have to trade away Cholowski now. We need to get rid of two. I was thinking him and Bowie. Instead, we did Petrangelo and Bowie. So... Right here is a look at our top 6D for this year, which honestly is still pretty solid. And we're actually left with 17 million in cap space, which is kind of unreal. So don't really need it right now, but can definitely utilize it at the trade deadline or definitely next year's free agency. And right now, guys, Winnipeg's offering us Brian Little and Matthew Perot for Peyton Krebs and Eric Comrie. Honestly, though, we're going to decline this just because we already have enough forwards and rather keep our prospects. And check this out. Seattle just offered us Matt Niskanen and Eric Stahl for two first round picks. Don't know why I'd want two overpaid veterans instead of first rounders, but I, I admire the offer. And the New York Islanders here just traded for Nikita Zaitsev, so I guess he's reunited with Lou Lamorell now. And the Islanders here trying to give us Josh Billing a third for two first rounders, but again, I'd honestly just rather keep the first rounders, especially since we already have more than enough forwards in the NHL. And naming the captains for this season, guys, obviously Larkin's keeping the C. I gave Dreisel an A, you know, big acquisition. He's definitely good enough. Also decided to take an A off Mantha just because he's only been all right and give it to Giordano, kind of the captain of that defense. I think he's the oldest player on this team, so I thought that made sense. And we just got a huge trade offer, guys. Brent Burns and Yan Ruda for Jared McIsaac and a first round pick. Obviously, Burns would fill in pretty nicely for Petrangelo, and at that point, we get Dry Style. Still have an awesome defenseman. Now, Burns still 88 overall. He is 36 years old, though, which is pretty old. Potential there is top four, so he's definitely like decline as we started at franchise making 8 million there for four more years. It's definitely risky. And as you can see in the bottom left, we actually still have a champion team status. So I don't know. Maybe this is something to look at at the deadline if we're in the playoffs and he's still playing well because I'm worried that rating's going to go down. But like I was mentioning, team status there is still champion. I'll show you guys the lines. Honestly, we are stacked, especially at forward. So first line here, you got Fabry, Dreisel, Zadina. Fabry actually switched to a playmaker. That way the chemistry is not too bad. He's also up to 86 overall. So Pretty nasty first line. Zadina as well as an 86, which I found was kind of crazy because he's played one season, had 44 points, already an 86. 63 points in the AHL is pretty solid, but I don't know if it warrants an 86 overall rating. Second line here is also pretty nasty. You got Raymond playing with Larkin and Dadnov. Raymond there's an 85 now. Kind of same thing as Zadina. He's had one year in the AHL, had 43 points, already an 85. Also switched him to a playmaker just to kind of help with the chemistry. Also, someone said he's more of a playmaker than a two-way. Third line here is pretty solid. You got Bertuzzi, Valina, and Mantha. And then fourth line, we have Sveshnikov, Rasmussen, and Hiroshi. So, like I was saying, we're pretty much stacked throughout at forward. Defense, obviously, not as good, but still pretty solid. Giordano down to 87, paired up with Sider on the top pair. We have Bean and Goldobin on the second pair, and then Cholowski and Hironic on the bottom pair. Five of the six of these guys are young, should be getting better over the season. Giordano is kind of like the veteran captain, so really not too bad. Goalies, Leonard's a starter. Askarov, though, 84 overall. He's definitely coming for that starting goalie spot. And then looking at the special teams here, you can see the first pile of unit gets plus three. So I'm hoping these guys just go off. Forgot to mention, Jake Bean, offensive defenseman, his hands are insane. 94 tiki, 90 hand eye, 95 passing and puck control. Like, that is better than Satina. Like, that's better than pretty much everyone on the team. Even Dreisel's hands aren't that good aside from his hand eye. So 
kind of insane. Second hit there also gets plus one. Four man's gain plus one and zero. Penalty kill there, three man. Three man's always so hard to get chemistry for, so usually just throw out the best center, best defenseman, hope for the best. AHL team here is also pretty good. We got Ernie, Ann, and Smith on the first line. So two thirds of the Burton Ernie line. Uh, Kuffner, Turgeon, and Dell call. We got Engvall, Perry, Abdelkader. Just buried in the AHL. I'm thinking after this year, maybe we'll buy him out. Uh, I don't even know this guy's name. Kevin Namaki, Grew and Hargrave on the fourth line. Defense here, we got Hicketts and Lindstrom on the top pair. Stoffling and McIsaac gained plus three on the second pair. And then Sekov Johansson there on the bottom pair. Quick look at the special team, the power unit. Obviously, just kind of our best guys. I'm thinking the AHL team should be pretty good. They got all new coaching staff as well. Comrie's the AHL starter. I'm thinking maybe if Askarov gets really high rated, we'll just trade Leonard for whatever we can. And then Comrie becomes the backup. Or even Larson, 23 years old, 75 now. Maybe he can get up to like an 80 overall. And he could be the backup. Obviously, tons of options here. Next, we're going to give you guys a look at the offense, defense, and goaltending ratings. So, as you can see there, we're an offensive heavy team. 96 offense. 87 defense, 87 goaltending. So very curious to see how this team does. I feel like we're ready either way. We have two first round picks. We have young players. We're in a good spot. And next year, guys, we have Vancouver trading Barchi for two second round picks. Uh, considering he's a guy that they sent down to the AHL, not too bad a return. So I just sent to Christmas, guys. As you can see, currently one point out of a wild card spot with 43 points and a 19, 13, and 5 record. Honestly, though, doing a lot better than we started out. I think at one point we were like 3 and 8 or something. So I was a bit worried, but seemed to have rallied back here. Hopefully, they can keep this going towards the trade deadline. And a big trade just went down between the Blackhawks and the Columbus Blue Jackets. Columbus getting Corey Crawford, Zach Hyman, and Brent Seabrook for a second round pick and a prospect. I'm guessing they got Crawford and Hyman for free for taking on Seabrook's contract because a second a prospect isn't really that much. So definitely an interesting trade there. And now Chicago's trying to trade us Oli Madden and Calvin DeHaan for first rounder. Honestly though, they're like the same rating as our guys, just older and getting overpaid, so not worth it. And Minnesota now trying to trade us Ryan Suter for two first rounders. I mean, that's costing us more than it would for Brent Burns, who I think is better, so. And speaking of San Jose, they just pulled off a huge trade with Arizona. Edward Vlasic, Dano in a fifth rounder for a first round pick and a prospect. And Edward Vlasic's only an 83 now. So definitely I don't think that's too great of a trade. And Chicago here gets Darcy Kemper from the Saddle Sock guys for Oli Madden in a third. Obviously he was on the block just because they had so many goalies. So I feel like that's a pretty good trade for them. Just lost Crawford, bring in Darcy Kemper. Two thirds for a third or fourth Comrie. I'm just going to say no. When you're not getting them back. As you guys can see, about a couple weeks away now from the deadline. And we're still, looks like, six points out of a playoff spot. The Metro division, though, is terrible. Suter for first, one for one, still saying no. I think you guys see Rangers there, first in that division. Murphy? I'm holding on to McIsaac. Um, I saw the Rangers were, like, first in the division with 70 points. Uh, 70 points in our division, like, you're barely in a wild card spot. Boston here just got Brodeen and Bodger from Minnesota for first and a third, so... Another Boston, Minnesota deadline trade. Calgary here trying to give us Hamnick for a first, saying no. Lots of action here, but, like... The fact we're outside the playoffs right now, I am not giving up a first round pick. That just seems not smart at all. I feel like just gotta hope our team can turn around, squeak in. Carolina here gets Sean Sherrott from Montreal for a f basically nothing. So pretty good trade for them there. So we have one more game against St. Louis. Then it'll be the deadline. Again, not trading Comrie for essentially nothing. Wow, what a trade. Washington trades Holpe a third and a fourth the Islanders for Nick Letty, a third round pick, Pelic and Boychuk. So Huge return there for Washington, getting a bunch of defensemen. I guess Ilya Samsonov is going to be their starter. I actually saw Samsonov they had on the block, so I guess they decided to go a different way. Juice here, 1.9 for two more years. 78 overall. Okay, if he was like an 81 or something, that might have been worth it, but not at 78. Irwin there, I do not want. So 67 points. We're actually 7 points out, even though we have a positive record, 30, 26, and 7. In the Metro, we'd only be 5 points out again. The Metro division is looking really weak. Dry Saddle, 52 points, 63 games. He's got to be doing better than that. Like, need to see a point per game from him. So, yeah, being seven points out, really, we're just going to stay the course. Team status is champion, but I feel like our defense just isn't strong enough. So, again, if there's a trade that's good for the now and the future, we'll make it. Otherwise, not really going to do much. Looking around, guys, I don't think there's any trades worth making for us right now. I did notice some really cool things around the league. Uh, first one here, Cole Perfetti, an 87 overall now for the Ducks. I thought that was kind of insane. After that, I noticed Dallin's now a 92 overall already at 21 years old for the Sabres. I mean, he is literally that good. He's a franchise defenseman, so it makes sense. Also, Kirby Dock here has low franchise potential now. He starts out at high top six. So the fact he got to low franchise is kind of insane. Also, Taze on the block, but making 10 half million. I just didn't think it was worth trading for. Colorado is stacked. McCarr's 91 already at 23. They've also got this Olin dude, Byram Haynes, three like medium elite players coming up. They traded for Spurgeon, like they're just gonna be so good. I saw two Seth Jones on the block, but 
I think that's because he's going to UFA, making 5.4 there for one more year, not extended. Hopefully we can sign him next summer. That would just be so huge for our team. Also on Minnesota, I noticed this Chichu guy, they got second overall in the 2019 redo draft, 89 overall right now, which is ridiculous, I would say. Um, also to the Devils here, I wanted to show you guys, they drafted the other high league goalie, 20 years old, 79 overall. Askarov right now, I think is 19 and 85 overall. So even though they're the same rating, same potential out of the draft, Askarov is just so much better. After that, I want to show you guys Lafreniere, 88 overall already at 20 years old. Like the dude is so good. So maybe we should have traded up from Raymond to get him, but honestly, I'm still pretty happy with our pick of Raymond. Also, Sergeyev apparently has the most value in Tampa. Then they have Kucherov, Hedman, Stutzel, Stamkos, Point. Like basically, they're still stacked, is what I'm saying. And Hendricks appeared here on the block for the Jets, but. Again, I feel like our team, honestly, we already have enough good players. Let's just stay the course, do a good drafting, hopefully sign some guys. I was looking to a Dallas. Unfortunately, they're playing pretty well right now. I was hoping they'd be out of a playoff spot. Maybe their pick would be a lottery pick, but um, well, ours ends up being one or whatever happens. I feel like there is a chance we can maybe trade up. And look at this, guys. The season's now over. We just missed the playoff by four points there with a record of 41, 33, and 8. We would have been one point shy had we been playing in the Metro, so... I kind of felt like that was our trajectory to finish just outside the playoffs. Now, if we trade for someone at the deadline, maybe that would have been enough to kind of push us in, but I definitely don't want to risk giving up picks or prospects for a rental and then missing the playoffs. Just didn't seem worth it. So hopefully we get lucky in the lottery. Dry saddle there, 76 points, 82 games, not too bad at all. Obviously, we were hoping for a point per game from him. Zadina, 64, pretty good in his second year, honestly. Raymond, 62. That's his rookie season. I'm wondering if he's going to get the Calder or not. 87 overall already. Obviously, entry level deal for the next three years. That's awesome. Larkin, 62 on the second line. Bertuzzi, 61 playing third line. That's awesome. Mantha, 57 also on the third line. Dadnov, not as great a year for him, only 52. So I wonder why. Like, he was actually getting more minutes. Fabry, only 45. And he was playing on the top line. So that doesn't make a lot of sense. And he was playing on the top line. So that doesn't really make a lot of sense. Vlino there, 35 up to an 81. Giordano, 33, not too bad. Bean, I noticed his hands are even better now. Like, they're about to be 99 everything, which is insane. Um, Siren 84, Goldman 83, I think they stayed the same. And then you have the fourth line there, and Hiroshi, Rasmussen, and Svechnikov. Next, you'll take a look at the goalie stats. So, Leonard, pretty good record, 0.905 save percentage, 2 by 9 4 goals against. Skarov, just under 500. Very similar stats, though, 0.902 and a 3.03. So, again, 85 overall already at 19. He is going to be the starter within the next year or so, and at that point, probably just trade Leonard for whatever we can. Take a look at the entire league here, see the lead score was. Tyler Sagan, 103 points. Tarasenko, Nylander, 98. Would not expect that. Kuznetsov, Kopitar still going at 34. Eichel, Ovechkin, O'Reilly, Stamkos. Okay. Also, guys, I want to take a look at the AHL scoring leaders on our team. Giovanni Smith actually had 70 points in 82 games, so that's pretty awesome. You could definitely see him making the fourth line next year. Ernie, 63. Dalcall, 61. And they're 60. So, I mean, we still have N and Ernie as well. Definitely just have, like, too many fourth liners. Ryan Kuffner, 54, is not bad. McIsaac, 53 as a D-man. Is actually awesome. He should grow a lot this summer. Lindstrom 44 even isn't too bad. So pretty happy with how they're playing. Comrie here 34 and 20. Larson 15 and 5. So uh, nice stats from both goalies. And our HL team actually won their division. So back in the playoffs there with 106 points. Take a look at the NHL now. Florida Panthers. Or sorry, that's the division. I think they won the conference as well. And they did win the President's Trophy. St. Louis right behind them. You got seven teams there, 100 plus points. So. I feel like we might have, wow, I was going to say might have finished top 16, missed the playoffs, finished 14th, Calgary, Arizona, Seattle, all less points than us, but they're in the West, so that kind of sucks. Take a look here, who's got the best chance here for the Shane Wright, Matthew Savoy lottery, and it's the Nashville Predators actually, so we'll see if we can somehow take them out as the 14th best team in the NHL. And so the first round of the playoffs, guys, up against the Rockford Icehawks, we're just going to sim game by game here, see what happens. We actually win the first one, one nothing. so Conrad there with the shutout. Second game, 5-2 win, obviously. The first round here is a best of three, and we take it in three, there we go. And in the second round, we have the Admirals, this is Nashville's AHL team, obviously. They finished last in the league, so they're probably hoping for some good things in the AHL. We unfortunately lose them in the first game, 2-0. Win, though, second game, 2-1, OT win, there we go, nice answer back. Win again, got a bit of a streak going, 2-1, all close games. 3-0 win, Conrad with another shutout. Can we get four games straight here? I think we did. We did 4-2 win. Wow, so Griffin's there. Lose the first one. They just roll through. Going to the conference final now. Not sure who we're going to play. The San Diego Gulls. I'm pretty sure they won the Calder Cup in our first year. 3-2 win and 7-3 win the first two games for us. That is awesome. We are just rolling right now. Come on. 
lose there in San Diego, 6-2. to two. Need to win this next one. Come on, don't want to tie it up. There, oh, I thought we had a win. 4-3 OT lost there in game number four. Luckily, a 2-1 win in game five. Can we end it here? Game number six. Going to game seven. Here we go. And there we go. We pull off the win, 5-3. Calder Cup final now, Bridgeport Sound Tigers this is, of course, the Islanders AHL team. We've got Dal Call from them. Let's take a look at the ratings. So we have three better offense. They have eight better defense. And then we have one worse goaltending. I think I saw Leo Kamra was their leading scorer in the AHL. He was just tearing it up. I mean, he's got to be mid-30s now. So we'll see what happens. We're 11-4. and four. Win the first one. 3-1. to one. Let's see if we can keep going here. Game two. Another win. Those are both away games as well. Let's see if we can come back. Sweep. Winning Grand Rapids. 2-1 OT win. Okay, let's see what happens here, game four. All right, guys, first period. And we're down 2-1, but still, lots of time left. All right, not looking good now, 3-1 for them. And yeah, unfortunately, lose that 1-4-2. Hopefully, game number five here, we can get it done. First period, 1-1, one, one, angle for us. Second period, not looking good again, down 3-1. <sighs> unfortunately, back-to-back 4-2 losses, are you kidding me? So we're going back home here for game number six. I can't believe 3-0 series lead, and we're still going to game six. Maybe we just, I don't know, win it at home here, come on. Down one early, Komarov again for them. Are you kidding me? The exact same score. Three in a row, four two losses. On to game seven. This is ridiculous. Like the first three games were close as well, but I, if we get reverse swept, I'm gonna cry. Even though it's the AHL, it's kind of like, are you kidding me? All right, here we go. First period. Huge period for the boys. Okay, Perry actually gets it done. Two goals. He's gonna be our hero. Up 3-1. Goal for each of us in the second, so it's a 4-2 lead. Let's just resume the sim here. Turn it up to eight times. They're, they're on a power play right now. And Komarov gets one. Are you kidding me? You need to kill that off. Van Sample there ties the game. And though answers right back immediately, so we're up by one. Come on, boys. Hold on. There we go. 14 seconds left. I think we're going to be Calder Cup champs. And there we go, guys. With AHL team, the Grand Rapid Griffins there, Calder Cup champions. So... I mean, we already have a pretty stacked team. I feel like this is a very good sign of things to come. Keeper Bellas there, I'm sure, was a good player for the Sound Tigers. Also, if you guys didn't know, the Culture Cup Celly is like the exact same as NHL. Just um, team celebration, handshake, lift the trophy, then the picture. Also, Celly had Bode Wild there. I feel like that's Turgeon, but I'm not sure. Or maybe that's N, actually. Is that? Okay, it is N. So there you go. Dropped down the AHL, but got named captain of the AHL team. And want to call their cup, so can't be too upset. And next, you guys, you have the team pick. Honestly, that logo's got to be like the best logo in the AHL. I do wish they kept the navy blue for the Grand Rapids Griffins, opposed to black. But that logo is just so sick. And look at this: the three stars of the game. Komarov a goal and two assists. Same with Bellows. Lidstrom there also though goal and two assists as a D man. I mean, I guess we were playing in Bridgeport, so they gave their team the two stars. Doesn't matter though. We got the cup. Look at this, guys. Are you kidding me? Edmonton wins the draft lottery, jumping from 9 to 1. They trade us Joy Saddle for Petrangelo, and now they're going to get Shane Wright. Like, are you kidding me? Minnesota 2. Carolina jumps from 12 to 3, so they probably get Brad Lambert. And then Nashville there actually drops to 4. I was looking at the teams, too. I was like, where are we? Like, am I missing us? Are we top 3 pick? But it's because of the expansion. It only shows 15 there, opposed to 16. I was kind of confused at first. Also, the Devils win the Stanley Cup somehow. Taylor Hall wins a cup. Edmonton picks first overall. I do not know what's going on right now. So, kind of crazy year. And actually, guys, before I show you the awards, I want to show you the retirement. I feel like it makes more sense um, to do that at the end of the season rather than the beginning of, like, the next year. So, hopefully here. Did I actually just skip over retirement? It should pop up. All right, here we go. View retired players. Spezza there. Big career for him. He actually retires as a center. That's awesome. Pondville there. Jeff Carter. Louis Erickson, both those guys in the AHL. UC Yokin, Mike Green on Arizona. Dubinsky was in the Dallas Stars AHL team. Seabrook retired in the AHL for the Columbus Blue Jackets. That trade's actually not too bad. I thought it was a cap jump, but like they had him for two months, then he retires. Jack Johnson also in the AHL. Kind of interesting to see all the guys that just got buried. Now they're retiring. Goalies, Gustafson. So still, Lundqvist isn't retiring yet. The Kings, you know, still playing. And next, you guys want to take a look at the awards. As I already mentioned, Devils, Stanley Cup champions. Let's see who they beat. Pittsburgh in seven, Sabres in seven, Bruins in six, and then the Coyotes actually in six. Coyotes swept the Ducks, beat the Vegas Golden Knights in five, beat the Stars in seven, and then of course lose to the Devils. And then we kind of already know our road there in the AHL, but the Bridgeport Sound Tigers there, they took out Thunderbirds, Penguins, and the Rocket. Let's take a look here as well. I want to see the AHL playoff stats, how our team did. And there, 20 points, 22 games, not too bad. Dal call 18. 22. You could see him growing. Same with Kuffner. Hicketts, 13. Not too bad for D-Man. 
Perry, Game 7 Hero, Turgeon, Lindstrom, alright, so overall pretty good there from all the players. Um, next year we'll take a look at the awards off of the NHL there, so already know all the team awards, player awards, Sagan Art Raw, Tarasenko got the heart, Kale McCarr gets James Norris, pretty young to win the James Norris at like 22, 23, usually it's an older guy. Kuznetsov, Lady Bing, Raymond there with the Calder, that is awesome, I was hoping he'd win it, he had like 60 whatever points, I'm like, he's gotta have a good shot, so we have a Calder winner, really happy with that. Hall there got the Conn Smythe, finally gets the cup, and he gets the MVP of the playoffs, love it. Bennington, Vesna, I didn't even realize he was on Arizona, so I mean, that's kind of crazy. Gibson though, William Jennings, Dylan, Bill Masterton for Seattle, Hamill there, Vegas coach, gets the Jack Adams, O'Reilly gets the Selkie again, Tarasenko also got Ted Lindsay, and then Sagan there, Marisa Shard. Next, you'll check the AHL awards. Obviously, we won the Calder Cup. Player awards, Kasha there, most points, unless it's Case. I think it's Kasha. Komarov, MVP, that's kind of nuts. Forsback Carlson, most goals. Valentanko, outstanding rookie. So Bridgeport team was stacked. They also had the best team in. And we somehow, they also had the best goalie. They had all the awards, we beat them. Ernie actually got MVP. I'm surprised it was him, not N. That's interesting. Spa check, sportsmanship. Uh, Chisselholm, I think is how you say it, community involvement. And then Skinner there on the Condors actually had lowest goals again. So big year for the Bridgeport Sound Tigers. Unfortunately, we had to ruin it there in Game 7. Luckily, we didn't sweep them. You know, we allowed it to go to Game 7. But that's going to make guys for Year 3. Again, we didn't make the playoffs, but I think there's a lot of, you know, bright things coming. Lots of good young players. So definitely optimistic about this team's future. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.